Hello. My name is Alina Palomaru. I'm a policy researcher at the RAND Corporation and principal investigator of this new study. Our objective was to help Westside Food Bank better understand the scope of food insecurity in L.A. County with a particular focus on their service area so as to most effectively target resources and forward planning. First, we wanted to know how is food insecurity measured and how can we think about it more broadly to ensure a more accurate understanding of who is at risk of food insecurity. We then wanted to know more about who is food insecure in LA County and in Westside Food Bank's service area. Finally, we sought to look forwards to the future. Are there any distinct unmet population needs? And what practicalities of food distribution might Westside Food Bank consider in planning and deploying its resources to help people in need? Thus, we wanted to establish a picture of vulnerability and shortcomings in provision to better inform future strategies. The research process began with a broad scan of relevant literature to identify how food insecurity is measured, advantages and disadvantages of each approach, and risk factors of food insecurity. During this phase, we also used publicly available data to develop a database of potential new providers that Westside Food Bank could partner with. Next, we identified publicly available survey datasets to help answer our research questions. We looked at the Food Access Research Atlas, Food Environment Atlas, CalFresh Case Counts, and Census Opportunity Atlas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC Social Vulnerability Index, and the Common Core of Data. In evaluating each source of data, we paid close attention to two features. First, the ability to map data at census tract level. These are small geographical areas used to collect and tabulate local area data. We also needed to map socioeconomic vulnerability beyond poverty alone. So we proceeded with the CDC's Social Vulnerability Index, or SVI, and with California's Common Core of Data. We also used a publicly available density map of the 2022 point-in-time homeless count for LA County. Let's take a closer look at the CDC's Social Vulnerability Index. Its goal is to identify and map vulnerable communities that most likely need support when disasters happen. In this study, we used the 2020 SVI dataset, which included estimates based on the American Community Survey data from 2016 through 2020. While this is a slight limitation because the data may obscure more recent changes in vulnerability following the COVID-19 pandemic, the trade-off is the granularity that these data offer. The SVI scores and ranks each individual U.S. census tract based on 16 social factors grouped into four themes that then inform the overall social vulnerability index. It's a complex algorithm, but in essence, each geographical census tract is first scored on each of these 16 variables. These individual variable scores are combined to determine the broader theme scores. Then, in turn, the variable scores are also consolidated into a single score of overall social vulnerability for each tract. Each tract's overall score can then be compared to California's 8,057 other tracts, giving it a relative social vulnerability ranking compared to other tracts in the state. In this presentation, we will show how this detailed geographic analysis has allowed us to map vulnerability in L.A. County and particularly in Westside Food Bank's area of operations. Eligibility for free and reduced price school meals is another significant indicator of vulnerability. For data on this, we use the Department of Education's Common Core of Data, or CCD, which is its primary database on public elementary and secondary schools in the U.S. The most current data was for the 2020-2021 school year. For this study, 
We created an indicator to capture only schools with 40% or more of students eligible for free or reduced price meals, which is a threshold relevant for free school meal policies. Food insecurity is a complex socioeconomic phenomenon. Our scan of the food insecurity literature included peer-reviewed journal articles as well as non-academic published reports on the topic. A common thread was the problematic way that food insecurity is measured. Most researchers in this area use the U.S. Department of Agriculture's survey module, known as the Current Population Survey Food Security Survey. This captures self-reported perceptions about access to food, food quality and quantity, and lower food intake for adults and children. But because the survey is typically administered every December and is focused on experiences over the past 12 months, the estimates may result in undercounting food insecurity because long periods of recall are inherently problematic. Also, those with higher incomes may downplay periods of vulnerability. What is more, food insecurity may be sporadic through the year, which may further compromise respondents' answers. Finally, these estimates are available only at state level. Other data are available at county level, such as Feeding America's Map to Meal Gap, but this has insufficient granular detail for planning in an urban metropolis, such as L.A. County. Recent research also suggests the need to expand measurement of food insecurity to include specific populations, such as college students, seniors, people with disabilities, people experiencing housing insecurity, people experiencing homelessness, veterans, and even active military service families. Moreover, recent studies have identified aspects of food insecurity that are not consistently measured. These include having the financial means to buy food, the availability of food supply, a person's proximity to food supply, the nutritional status of available food, what social support they may have, any cultural diet limitations, and illness resulting from spoiled or unsafe food. Considering all these factors, the findings of our literature review facilitated the plotting of a series of density or heat maps which highlight areas of greatest need. This first map relates to theme one of the Social Vulnerability Index, socioeconomic status. Here, we include factors such as living in poverty, experiencing unemployment, facing housing cost burdens, with no high school diploma and no health insurance. The white border indicates Westside Food Bank's service area. The density overlay shows that socioeconomic vulnerability is predominant in the eastern and southern parts of the service area, with a few pockets of vulnerability towards the coast. It's notable that there are significant concentrations of socioeconomic vulnerability immediately outside the current service area along the eastern, northern, and southern borders. As an aside, for all maps, the gray areas represent missing data or tracts with less than 5% of the mean total population in the SVI dataset. This map highlights the census tracts with the most vulnerable 10% of the population, or 90th percentile. The SVI designates the greatest area of vulnerability as flags. Within Westside Food Bank's area of operation, the most vulnerable 10% reside in the eastern and southern parts, with higher vulnerability immediately outside the service area to the east and a few pockets to the south and north. The second theme is household characteristics. It includes people aged 65 and older, 17 and younger, civilians with disabilities, single parent households, and people with limited English language proficiency. Within Westside Food Bank's border, we note peaks in the eastern and southern parts of the service area with a few pockets of vulnerability towards the coast. Notably, there are significant concentrations of vulnerability immediately outside the current service area along the eastern, northern, and southern borders. 
While severe vulnerability by household characteristics prevails in the central part of the service area, there are more intense needs immediately outside to the east. The third theme is racial and ethnic minority status. This theme comprised the following groups. Hispanic or Latino of any race, Black or African American, Asian, American Indian, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, two or more races, and other races. Within the service area, we notice more minority groups residing in the eastern and southern parts with higher prevalence immediately outside along the eastern, northern, and southern borders. For this theme, the flag highlight is binary relative to the non-white population. The minority population spread here mirrors that in the previous map with top 10% concentrations in the eastern and southern parts. The fourth theme depicts vulnerability by housing type and transportation. This included living in multi-unit structures, living in mobile homes, crowding, having no vehicle, and living in group quarters. Within Westside Food Bank's service area, vulnerable individuals reside in the eastern and southern parts, with a few pockets of vulnerability towards the coast. Notably, there are significant concentrations of vulnerability immediately outside the service borders in the east, north, and south. The 10% most vulnerable by housing type and transportation live in the northern and eastern regions of the service area, with additional need immediately outside to the east and a few pockets to the north. When combined, the 16 variables result in the following map of overall social vulnerability. This shows high vulnerability in the eastern and southern parts of Westside Food Bank's service area, with a few pockets towards the coast. There are visible concentrations of social vulnerability immediately outside the current service area along the eastern, northern, and southern borders. The top 10% overall social vulnerability flags fall across the eastern and southern parts with noticeable severe vulnerability immediately outside the service area to the east and a few pockets in the north in the next set of maps, we overlay plots of institutions and organizations onto the overall social vulnerability index map. We start with LA County schools, where more than 40% of students are eligible for free and reduced price meals. Within the service area, the location of these schools overlaps with the geographic spread of the social vulnerability index. Next, we plotted Westside Food Bank's current partner agencies. These are organizations that distribute food from Westside Food Bank to their own clients. This shows there are fewer partners in areas of some of the highest needs. The study remit did not include collection of organizational information about these distributors, so we don't know to what extent the organizations located in these areas have high capacity to service the need. But if these providers have a smaller footprint, then this map highlights the potential to expand points of distribution along the eastern and southern regions of the service area. We also plotted food providers, including food banks, pantries, and social agencies that offer hot meals to complement their other services. This map suggests there may be organizations in the areas of need in the eastern part of the service area that could be approached for future partnerships. Further, we overlaid plots of LA County and City of LA public libraries with the overall vulnerability index. The map shows the existence of nearly 200 public library branches, many of which may consider partnering with Westside Food Bank to distribute food to people living in the more vulnerable areas. Finally, we use data from the 2022 point-in-time homeless count in LA County to understand the density of people experiencing homelessness within Westside Food Bank's service area. The map shows that in areas such as downtown and South Los Angeles, there are more than 500 unhoused individuals per square mile. 
However, the density feathers out from there, with some concentrations extending west to the coast and to the north and south outside the service area. As a mapping footnote, in a recent RAND study, we found that many providers that distribute food offer limited service at weekends and during evening hours, creating gaps in the weekly cycle of food provision. Based on our findings, we can suggest areas for action, broader strategies with overarching objectives, and specific tactics to achieve these long-term goals. We also flag up opportunities for future research to improve strategic planning. Our results show elevated social vulnerability exists in the eastern and southern part of the service area where Westside Food Bank has fewer partner agencies. Looking at the density of vulnerability just outside the service area, there are high needs immediately to the east, south, and some pockets to the north. Thus, an overarching strategy could be to focus resources on those areas and expand distribution capacity to the east and south of the current service area. Several tactics might help accomplish this. First, partner with schools located in the areas of greatest need. These schools might offer opportunities to distribute food, which may be more convenient and less stigmatizing. A second tactic could be to find less traditional public partners. For instance, libraries could potentially support additional distribution capacity, which might open opportunities for filling provision gaps, such as at weekends. A third tactic could build on recommendations from other funders in this field to partner with care providers, such as health clinics serving Medicaid clients and child care centers. This could also bring food to where people feel comfortable receiving it. Further research is likely to help finesse developing strategies and tactics going forward. The first future research opportunity we identified is to measure Westside Food Bank partner agency capacity objectively. For instance, building size, staffing, service frequency, and utilization to help inform distribution plans. A second research thread could explore best practice and models of collaboration optimized by type of partner, understanding the opportunities, needs, and challenges of involving schools, nonprofits, faith based organizations, public libraries, or parks. Another useful pursuit would be to examine cultural and dietary preferences within Westside Food Bank's service area which could be accomplished with rigorous approaches combining client and provider surveys and interviews. Finally, we should be open to exploring food bank models and innovation outside LA County to understand how this challenging problem is being addressed elsewhere, both nationally and internationally. Be prepared to learn and then adopt, adapt, and implement best practice wherever it may be found and if practical and feasible. All that remains for me to do is to thank RAND for its initiative in funding the study. I also thank Westside Food Bank for their assistance with the study design. My gratitude also goes to my colleagues at RAND. Andrea Richardson, a senior policy researcher who helped design the study and oversaw the quantitative analysis. Leah Dion, a technical analyst who analyzed and mapped all the data. And Wendy Hawkins, a policy analyst who completed the literature review. Finally, I just want to acknowledge the hard work that Westside Food Bank and its partners do to serve people in our vulnerable communities. I wish them every success going forward.